Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And today we shall be looking at Kamala Harris's for appearance, as it were, this veneer that she has created of being a progressive president who is pro Palestinians and who seek to actually uh, free the Palestinians from the torture and from the sort of warfare that they're currently undergoing and facing, the crisis that we see in Palestine with the thousands, hundreds of thousands of deaths there. And it doesn't seem that there is an apparent um, termination, end of this war. However, Kamala continues to present herself as someone who desires a ceasefire and who wants the war between uh, Israel uh, to stop between Israel and Palestine to terminate at any given point. But we understand that Kamala is actually pro-Jewish, and she has made that very evident clear when she does interviews, including when she gave her um, speech at the Democratic National Convention that was held a week or so ago. She was very clear that she thinks that the, the Israelis have all rights to defend themselves. And we do think that they should be able to defend themselves. But we understand now that the United States and Israel are connected. And we know that they're hand in glove and that the U.S. uses Israel as a proxy to perpetrate its deadly imperialistic um, goals and agendas. Something that we have to understand, we have to come to grips with is that the United States controls APAC. That's the United States Military Industrial Complex, which is a massive apparatus, and I've been saying it on this channel. But the United States, because it still has a constitution, cannot present itself, even though it is at the moment doing some, you know, it, it, it is really doing that now in terms of showcasing its military might and the fact that it is on a quest for full spectrum dominance. However, there are certain things that it still continues to conceal, which, of course, are the deadly attempts, the deadly attacks on people's territories uh, to take over their resources and to just ensure that she is or she remains the uncontested military power in the world. So we have APAC or the Israeli group, right, working on behalf of the military industrial complex. But so often we hear people on the left, they tend to, you know, think that everything, all the power remains in the hands of the Jews. But that is not true. The Jews are just being used as proxies, as intermediaries of the US military industrial complex to carry out the nef their nefarious agendas and objectives, right? Something that we must understand. So Kamala Harris works for those people, the U.S. military industrial complex, and of course their intermediary, the Israeli group, right? What we call APAC. Now we ought to understand also that Kamala Harris is married to a Jew, right? Emhoff, right? What's his first name again? I forgot his first name, Kamala Harris. Um, that's um the first gentleman, the second gentleman, as it were. Um, Doug Emhoff, right? That's the person to whom she's married. And he is a religious Jew. He's not a secular Jew, right? So I think that that marital relationship also was something that was planned and that it is no coincidence, right? That she is on her way to becoming the first South Asian and Black and female president in the United States. And that the first gentleman, if she becomes president, which seems more than likely that she will become the next U.S. president, will be a Jew, right? So it's important for you to understand who this man is. And you should do your research about who this dog Emhoff is. Now, this is coming from, there's a, uh, an article here. I think it's coming from the Israeli Times. I pull up the paper here. Um, and I'm not seeing the name of the paper here. <laughs> anyway, I think it's from the Israeli Times. Let us just see if I can share my screen with you. Perhaps you can see better than I am seeing. Sometimes I'm wondering if my eyes are playing tricks 
with me. But let's look at what this article is suggesting here. Um, share screen. And we have here, uh, who is Doug Emhoff, Kamala Harris's Jewish husband and potential first gentleman? And we have working to combat anti-Semitism as second gentleman has driven me a lot closer to faith, Doug Emhoff said. So he's suggesting here, Doug is suggesting that working to combat anti-Semitism, and you understand what anti-Semitism in the United States means. It means, therefore, that every opinion or you know judgment outside of the U.S. military-industrial complex um, understanding of the world has to be suppressed, has to be repressed. So if you are expressing an opinion that does not cohere with what the official dumb wants you to say, really that is what anti-Semitism is all about. It's not just about hatred of the Jews, as you know the word, the, 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 the simple definition, the literal definition of the word is. You have to look beyond what the media is trying to say. Now the United States is using this anti-Semitism sort of uh, you know uh, propaganda because it is a propaganda to repress and to suppress speech, to restrict speech as it were. And that is what you have to understand. So he's saying that this sort of agenda is allowing him to draw closer to his faith. And he says that shortly after, not, not what he says, but what the article is saying, shortly after the October 7 attacks in Israel, American Jewish leaders convened at the White House to hear President Biden speak. The man who had brought them there was President Biden's unofficial advisor on anti-Semitism, Doug Emhoff. Right? So he is Joe Biden's unofficial advisor on anti-Semitism. Now, it's interesting to note that also when Trump was in office, right, uh, who was his advisor? One of his main advisors was his daughters. One of his daughters, what's her name again? Um, is it Bianca? can't remember her name, but, you know, the first daughter, she, her husband is Jewish, right? Kushner, right? So Kushner was his advisor. So we have all of these Jewish advisors to the president, right, of the United States. And what this article here has intimated is that Doug Emhoff is Joe Biden's unofficial advisor on anti-Semitism. Did you know that? So that is what it's all about. So you would not expect a Kamala Harris to be defending the interest of the Palestinians. She will not do that because her husband is advising the president on what needs to be done. Husband of Vice President Kamala Harris, M. Hoff, is the first second gentleman to sit in the White House, right? He's also the first Jewish spouse of an American president or vice president, right? So that is what you need to know. He's the first uh, second gentleman, and he is also the first Jewish spouse of an American president or vice president, something that you need to understand. If, as rumors and indeed memes suggest, Kamala Harris replaces Joe Biden in this year's presidential race, M. Hoff could become the first gentleman and the first Jew to hold the role, right? So this is what it's all about. So if he is the unofficial advisor to Joe Biden, who is the sitting president, what do you think if Kamala Harris should become the president of the United States? May, might she might as well make him the official advisor on anti-Semitism. And anti-Semitism means that we cannot critique anything that Israel does, right? If the criticism is unfavorable, even if it is true, it will not be tolerated by official dumb. It will be not be tolerated by the empire, by the U.S. empire something that you have to be aware of. And some of you are so excited to be, you know, to cast your vote for Kamala Harris, but you have to understand that the atrocities that we are witnessing in Palestine, carried out by the Israelis, 
will be held on your shoulder. Will You will be accountable for all of those deaths indirectly if you support her because that's you're going to support her policies. Because Doug, that, Doug M. Huff, the second gentleman in the White House, is Joe Biden's unofficial advisor on anti-Semitism, something that you've got to understand and you've got to really begin to grapple with. Now, arriving in the White House in 2021, Emhoff took a step back from his career as an entertainment lawyer in Los Angeles. Anti-Semitism was on the rise in the United States and the second gentleman found himself becoming more and more active in working to fight what he called the epidemic of hate. Doggy, this issue has really found you. He remembers his wife, Harris, saying, now lean into it. So it's, you know, this is what Kamala Harris said to him, that you have a role to play in combating anti-Semitism. And anti-Semitism is any critique, whether justified or unjustified, of the U.S. military industrial complex or whatever Israel does. And remember now that Israel is just an arm of the United States military industrial complex. It is not the nation. It is not the power structure. It is a part of the power structure. The military industrial complex is the power structure, the Defense Department, the CIA, all of these secret organizations are what make up the military industrial complex. And Israel is a part of that structure. It is not the nation or the power structure that caused the, 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 um, the, it is not that Israel is not the nation state, as it were, who tells the United States what to do, as many people surmise. It is the U.S. military industrial complex which controls what Israel does or does not do. Right, and I should tell if I if 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 tomorrow the United States decides to stop the flow of arms into Israel, you know, and stop sending money to the United to to Israel, billions of dollars, then all of what we're seeing now will stop, and that is what should indicate to you who controls who. It is not the other way around, as some people are suggesting, that it is Israel which controls the United States Congress. It is not Israel that controls the U.S. It is the other way around. It is the opposite of what you're thinking. Now, let us look, let me share my screen again with you, because this is a very important topic that we have to I, highlight and we have to mention here. Now, we cannot normalize this kind of office say and normalizing mean that you cannot critique what israel you cannot criticize you cannot lodge your complaints against what israel is doing in palestine we cannot normalize this emhoff said at this event as long as i have this microphone i'm going to speak out against hate bigotry lies i'm going to speak out against those who praise fascist murderers and idolize extremists. These are very strong words. Because who is the one really perpetrating and supporting bigotry and hate and lies? I leave you to decide that. Leaders of the Jewish community have praised Emhoff's commitment to combating anti-Semitism. I think a lot of people don't realize how significant it was right away that he's due in that role. So he's not just there to be supportive to, of his wife, right? He's there for a specific role that he's playing. So we have Sheila Katz, chief executive of the National Council of Jewish Women. These spaces have never been our places before. And what Emhoff is doing by who he is and who he's engaging with in the community is just nothing we've seen before. Nothing we've seen before. So what is happening in Israel 
um, and Palestine, particularly the atrocities that are being perpetrated against the Palestinians, that will not stop as long as this guy is in the White House. Because he is interpreting the fact that the Palestinians have this inherent hatred against the Israelis and the Israelis are defending their territory, they're defending their liberties, they're defending themselves. This is something that you've got to understand. Now, since 2022, Emhoff has continued to engage with Jewish communities. He visited um, Auschwitz on International Holocaust Remembrance Day in January 20, 2023 and laid a wreath at the Wall of Death where thousands were executed. Now, one of the things that I want to say to you, I am not anti-Jew, right? In fact, I am anti any hatred, any form of bigotry, any form of lies, any form of unnecessary, unjustified warfare committed against anybody because we're all humans and life is precious. What I do not engage myself in is looking at one side and then suggesting that this one side is the truth, right? And we're not suggesting here that you might not have, you know, um, Palestinians who are doing terrible things to Jews. But what we are suggesting here is that if the United States engages these two groups in an objective conversation and stop arming Israel and sending billions of dollars to Israel, we know that the thing can be significant. This tension can be significantly be reduced. It can be um, eliminated. It can, you know, it can terminate. But it is not the United States, you know, objective to do that because it makes money um, by killing people and creating conflicts around the world, right? Something that you have to understand. That's a part of the military industrial complex, the ethics or the lack thereof, of the military-industrial complex. Now, if Kamala Harris were to run, her husband wouldn't be her only link to the American Jewish community. Attending a high school in Montreal with a large Jewish student body. And this is, I'm happy that this paper is, you know, actually revealing this, because I'm going to do a video of her, her time spent in Montreal, right, in Canada during her high school years. And her mother actually, even though she worked at McGill University, but she actually also had a position at this General Jewish Hospital in Canada. So Harris has long had connections to the Jews or with the Jews. I am not sure what connections her mother, Shaimala um, Gopalan might've had, I am not sure. Right, I need to do more research on that if there's any information at all, because what is happening in our world today is that a lot of information is now being scrubbed from the internet, and you can hardly find information that you'd like to find. So attending a high school in Montreal with a large Jewish student body, the vice president raised money for the Jewish National Fund as a child. Harris, though, did concern pro-Israel voters in taking a harsher stance than Biden in challenging Benjamin um, Natan Hugh. Well, well, I always find it hard to, not, uh, whatever. Harris called for an immediate ceasefire in March ahead of the president and said Netanyahu has no excuses in, in, in censoring or ensuring rather aid reaches Gaza. All right. So that is, um, interesting, important that you understand. But listen to what he's saying here. Donald Trump, who Harris would be running against if Biden steps down, was criticized earlier this year for anti-Semitic rhetoric by the White House after saying that Jews who vote Democrat hate Israel and hate their religion. Notably, it was Doug Emhoff who took the harshest stance against the former president. This is a disgusting, toxic, anti-Semitic thing to say by anyone, let alone a former president of the United States, and it must be condemned, Emhoff said. As the second gentleman 
of the United States of America, right? Something you have to understand. But let's go on to another article that was written here. And I think that this is coming out from the Times of Israel. And it says here that Kamala Harris has long embraced Jewish ties, but critics take issue with her Gaza stance. Now, one of the things we must understand, you can't have your cake and eat it at the same time, right? You, sh you cannot have her getting married to a Jewish and somebody who is a religious Jew. He's not only, he's not a secular Jew that who doesn't care about faith, right? Remember now that the whole purpose for which Israel was actually created was for it to be a theocracy, another theocracy, be, be, believing that they were still God's anointed people, that they were still God's chosen people, and that God was eventually going to work through them to bring salvation to the world, as it were. And that's not true. That's not biblical. That's anti-Bible. It's not a truth that is cemented, that is grounded in biblical truth and biblical teachings. It is not true because the, the, the Jews, we understand, they rebelled against God many times and God finally had to wipe them out. In fact, he, as I've suggested on this channel many times, has not wiped all of them out, but he no longer desires to call them his chosen people because of the ultimate decision that they made to have killed his only begotten son. So the Jews as a nation is not, are no longer, I should say, God's chosen people. They are ordinary people like you and me, and who have to make a decision whether or not they want to follow Christ or they want to follow the devil. They too have to make that decision. I mean, even when they were God's chosen people, they also had to make that decision. But God actually bestowed his blessing on them when they were his chosen people, but they rebelled just like Americans are actually doing right now amidst the blessings that God has bestowed upon America. They think that they are the invincible, unconquerable nation. But when God decides to send his judgment as he did on Israel up on America, people are going to understand that you do not play with the God of heaven who shows patience and his patience endures for a long time, but eventually when his wrath shall be unfolded, that people are going to see that God does not tolerate evil, right? And what is happening between the Israelis and the Palestinians is really sheer evil, right? With the hundreds of thousands of deaths that we're seeing in the Gaza area. Now let's look at the, the um this article, the... Um, in the times of Israel. So coming down the stairs in the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem's old city in 2017, Kamala Harris saw the Western Wall and knew what she had to do. So she visited Israel, it seems, in 2017, and she was making her, um, what should I say now, you know, decision what she would do, her plans, because of obviously she knew that she would have been in the White House, right, with a vice president, or would eventually become president. Remember now that these things don't happen overnight. They are carefully and strategically planned. And Kamala knew that she was moving in that direction, I would say, from 2010. From she, she became the district attorney of, or the general attorney of, of, um, of, of California. She knew that. San Francisco, I think it was. Right, so we have here Harris, then a California senator, reached into her pocket and pulled out a blue kippah and clips she had prepared for the occasion. She told her Jewish husband, Doug Emhoff, to bend down a bit and fasten the kippah to his head. Now, Haley Seufer, then Harris's national security advisor, took a candid photo of the moment, which he says embodied Harris's relationship with the Jewish community. So from thence, she was actually making her symbolic gesture, making it known that she is committed to the Jewish community, not to America and Americans, all Americans of different communities, but she is committed to that particular, to that one community. The center knew what to expect at a moment of Jewish significance. 
listen to what the national security, her national security advisors say. She prepared for it because she knew it would be meaningful for Doug, said Soifer, who is now the CEO of the Jewish Democratic Council of America. Part of the reason that trip was so special for both of them was because it was his first time in Israel. The trip was Harris's third time in the country. So she seems to be very aware and knowledgeable of Jewish practice. And if you are there for the third time, chances are that she might be enamored by British, um, not British, but Israeli culture, right? Am I saying British by the Israeli culture, by the Jews? And perhaps they are the ones behind her, you know, getting to have become, you know, the prosecutor and attorney general in California. Maybe they were the ones who were behind her in terms of, you know, um, cementing her, giving her uh, huge loads of money because you cannot, you know, gain, you, you can't, you know, move, you can't acquire those positions. You are not going to be able to function in those positions if you are not, you know, um, gaining loads of money from the military industrial complex. Now, Harris went on to become United States vice president and has now been catapulted to running for the country's highest office after President Joe Biden ended his re-election bid and endorsed her. Over the course of her life and career, she has been surrounded by Jews. So this is this paper is now suggesting, and this is the Times of Israel giving us this news, right, that over the course of her life and career, so this is not only because she is married to a Jewish man, over the course of her life and career, she has been surrounded by Jews from her schoolmates to her colleagues to her closest family members. Right? She has been surrounded by Jews. And that is perhaps why her mother went to you know, work at this Jewish general hospital in Montreal, in Canada. Right? We don't know. Um, not much also is known about her mother. That background has given Harris 59 an easy familiarity with Jewish spaces, say those who have interacted with her. She has also encouraged Emoff to embrace his Jewish identity as the second gentleman. So it seems like she's even more Jewish than her husband. And she is tasked with letting him know that he has to do the job. Now she can hide behind him and say that it's not me who is doing whatever, you know, evil deed that might she might be engaged in, but her husband is defending his identity, right, and his ethnic background. For the first time, Mesua's, uh, Mesuzas, sorry, have been installed at the vice presidential residence, and Emhoff has taken a leading role in the administration's efforts to fight anti-Semitism. So we know that, you know, if you go to the office as a president or vice president, you really should not have your religious symbols being at the nation's White House. It shouldn't be. And Biden, too, has a picture of the Pope in, his, in the Oval Office. Should not be. Right? Because no president should be linked to or be promoting any specific religion. They can be religious, but their religion should be clothed, should be cloaked. I mean, they manifest it through their good deeds, but not through the symbolisms that are to be put up on the wall or to be promoted for the public to see. Right? Yes, people can know that you are Jehovah's Witness or you are Seventh-day Adventist or you're Baptist. Nothing is wrong with that. And you can declare such but not to put up the symbols on the wall, because remember now that America is a secular nation, right? And people are, then you have many different religious denominations and people ascribe to different faiths there. So it can be offensive if I go into your office and I see, you know, books of Ellen White, who is a who was a Seventh-day Adventist, you know, um, that might be offensive to a Jehovah's Witness or might be offensive to a Baptist, and the president is not there to promote that to promote religion, but it's there to follow the constitution of the United States, which promotes a secular sort of um, republican form of government. But Harris has also stirred concerns among some pro-Israel Jews, 
She has staked out positions on Israel's war with Hamas and the student protests against it that are to Biden's left and are sympathetic to some of the war's strongest critics. Samuel, not is it Shumel, Shumel Rosner, an Israeli author and commentator, noted that Harris's ascendance marks a generational departure from Biden, a man who has demonstrated a deep and abiding affection for Israel since 1970s, even amid criticism. But is it, is it really a change from Biden's belief and ideology, his commitment to Israel? I don't think it is, because it, it is being manifested, her Israeli connection and her deep commitment to Israel is being actually exemplified in the life of her husband, right? It's hard to draw a line between the vice president and the second gentleman when it comes to their engagement and so on some of these issues because they have been so deeply coordinated. If you think about the rush um, Hashina at their home, their remarks were so complimentary because they're both so deeply engaged in this work, right? So not only is Doug M. Hoff committed to the work that he's doing of protecting the Jews and Jewish um, agendas and objectives, he, her, his wife is also committed to that process and to that agenda. So Kamala cannot be pro-Palestine. And don't look at her color or her ethnic background. People cannot function in boxes. People are not in boxes. And not because I have a skin color or I belong to an ethnic group, it means therefore that I'm gonna behave the same way how the people with my skin color and my ethnicity behave. People have this weird ideology, it's almost like it's a religion. People do not behave like that. That is anti-human. People are not monolith. So because you are American and because you are British or because you're German, that you all behave the same way. That does not, that's not true. Right? It's not true. And not because Kamala Harris represents, as it were, a black, the black community or a South Asian community or the Jamaican community or the whatever she represents doesn't mean, therefore, that she is going to be pro-Palestine. She is an individual and she can make her own decisions. And she, one of the, the decisions that she has made is to marry to a Jew and one who is deeply immersed in his Jewish culture and who is desirous of cementing who's desirous of cementing. So sorry about that. That was a, you know, sort of technical difficulty that I just experienced, right? So he's desirous of cementing Jewish ideologies in the American culture. Because as, as, as I suggested before, the Jews and their doctrines and their ideologies, that which is being promoted in the media and in American mainstream culture, right? Are ones which represent the nefarious agenda of the U.S. military industrial complex. And Kamala Harris is representing these interests, right? And these objectives, something you must understand and stop talking about her and her uh, interest in the Palestinian effort because she is pro-Israel. Right? She is a pro-Israel American presidential candidate. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like, you share, and you subscribe. Remember now to hit the like button because this might be a video that might be flagged on YouTube. I don't know because of what's going on and the anti-Semitism talk, even though I am not anti-Semite. Uh, anti but that is how they you know, will interpret things that might not be in their own ideology or that they don't want to subscribe to, right? Because we're no longer living in a world of free speech. Okay, so all the best to you. See you in another video. Bye.